Hey everybody, uh, my name is Janet Sheriff. I'm the moderator today with uh, Newfoundland.gold and we have three great presentations for you today. Uh, joining us today from Sky Gold, which is SKYG on the TSXV, is Aaron McBerty. I hope I have pronounced that correctly, Aaron. Uh, welcome. Um, also joining us today, Alex Klenman from Leocor, which is LECR on the CSE. And wrapping up the panel is Christopher Reynolds from OPAWICA, and that's OPW on the TSXV. So welcome all today. We're going to give each person uh, about a 10 minute presentation, and then we'll convene after and have a bit of a discussion. So thank you all. Um, Alex, uh, sorry, Aaron, uh, you go first. So um, if it, you just want to uh, drop off the camera, the others, I will introduce Aaron. Aaron is with Sky Gold. He's a geologist and a director of the board. Uh, they are working on the Mustang project in the Queensway area of uh, Newfoundland and Labrador. And he joins with a uh, wide range of experience uh, across Canada and the US. So um, take it away. Um, All right. So I'm a, I'm a director with Sky Gold. I'm uh, in charge of the Newfoundland uh, properties uh, with Sky Gold. We have uh, other properties uh, in uh, Ontario, Quebec, and uh, Nevada, but uh, I'm focused on the Newfoundland properties. Um, so uh, you can go to the next slide. Uh, this is the uh, disclaimer. We're going to spend a minute on this page, and that's a minute. Let's go again. So we're in the middle of the Queensway in uh, Newfoundland. We've got uh, property uh, with uh, uh, some other companies like Lab Gold and Newfound Gold, which have some great discoveries. Um, they've uh, uh, really done their work, and uh, we're hoping that we can find some gold like they have. Next slide. So we've got a drilling project on the Mustang that uh, uh, did pretty good uh, in 2020-2021. We had 19 holes drilled um, in the northern uh, section and the southern section. The northern section had a uh, uh, we had a hole 14 that uh, had a, uh, a 0.78 gram per ton uh, and 32.85 meters, um, which is a pretty good intercept. Um, it's not newfound gold's numbers, but uh, um, in an old, uh, uh, an old geologist sort of uh, speak, it's uh, it's pretty good. Right? Uh, we've also had uh, 1.6 grams per ton over 1.6 meters and 2.4 grams per ton over 0 0.5 meters in hole uh, uh, one. And we've had uh, 3.5 meters in uh, over one meter in hole three. These were pretty good uh, numbers, but um, we've, uh, the, the thing about um, the um, uh, uh, gold that we found, um, it was um, a very, um, very, uh, very good. Uh, uh, just give me a second here. Uh, so we've had uh, uh, high stibnate and arsino pirate numbers, uh, but gold values vary from hole to hole. And the stibnite and arsino pirate zones are good indicators for higher gold values for the next phase of uh, drilling. So we've got, uh, we've been in talks with Gold Spot, and uh, we released a a statement today that uh, says that we're going to be uh, working with Gold Spot over the next um, uh, you know year or so, and they're going to give us uh, some great intercepts and hopefully some new targets that we can uh, drill over the uh, uh, coming year. So we're going to get those uh, those drill targets in say September, and uh, we're going to be uh, uh, hopefully uh, drilling in uh, October, November, something like that. Um, we did find uh, some visible gold in, uh, uh, I think, hole 14. Uh, it was found at 66.32 uh, meters, and uh, that was a really good find. But uh, visible gold doesn't mean that you, you're going to find a whole bunch of gold, so um, we're, we're hopeful. Right? Uh, you can go to the next slide now. 
So our hand sampling program uh, was uh, very, very good. I think we're, there's seven different trenches that we uh, we dug and excavated. Uh, we have, uh, you know, 10.4 uh, grams uh, uh, in the uh, northern section of the um, uh, uh, the property. Uh, we had a lot of little sniffs of gold, um, you know, like 1. Uh, I think 1.1. 1. 1. Uh, we had a 2.3. Um, but um, the bigger ones, like the 10.4, uh, were uh, uh, really good finds. And then in the southern section, we had a 12.14 grams per ton in a brecciated quartz vein and an 8.13 gram per ton in another brecciated quartz vein. So these were, uh, uh, you know, fairly far apart. I think they were nine meters apart or something like that. But uh, these uh, contributed to our... Uh, or drill targets, and we ended up finding the um, the 30 uh, 32 meter um, uh, 0.78 gram per ton uh, section uh, through those uh, uh, hand sample finds. So uh, next uh, section or next slide. Thank you. So the Virginia property, uh, we had a three week uh, exploration program, a trenching program slash uh, prospecting program. Uh, we uh, excavated the two trenches. Uh, that are uh, shown in the slide here. Uh, you can kind of see, uh, if you can move the cursor over to the trenches. Yeah, over a little bit, yeah. So we have two trenches. Uh, one is over the the uh, old A11 trench that was um, uh, dug by a previous, previous company, and we were trying to find a 3.5 ounce or 3.3 ounce uh, uh, gold uh, hit. Uh, so we're waiting uh, the assays uh, to, um, uh, to find out about that, and we're really looking forward to uh, getting those uh, assays. So they're about, um, I think one is uh, 90 meters, and another one is, uh, I think, 80 meters. And we have 131 uh, uh, different samples from that um, uh, those trenches. And they were basically a quartz gabbro uh, with minor, uh, minor veining and uh, um, we had a lot of arsenopyrite, a little bit of stibnite, but uh, for the most part, it was arsenopyrite and, uh, and pyrite at about 5% in some places. And we found two discoveries. Uh, one is the uh, Copper Hawk. Uh, it's a multi vein brecciated system uh, with uh, stock work in a, a graphitic uh, siltstone uh, host unit. Um, it's uh, about 63 meters across. Uh, it's uh, veined uh, in parallel with the uh, Appleton Fault, which runs straight to our property. And another one called the uh, Winter Vein, which was uh, uh, discovered next to the A5, uh, the old A5 trench. Uh, yeah, you got it right there. And uh, that is in parallel uh, with the system as well. So we took, uh, I think, eight samples on the Winter Vein and uh, about 20 on the uh, uh, in channel samples on the uh, um, the Copper Hawk, and uh, they're 230 uh, meters apart. So if we do find uh, good hits in the assays, then it could be a big uh, boost for Sky. Next slide. So here's some pictures of the Copper Hawk and Winter Vein on the left. Uh, just move your cursor over. Okay, so that's the Winter Vein. Uh, it contains stibnite, uh, arsenopyrite. It's a brecciated uh, quartz vein. Um, I'm unsure about the uh, host rock that is within, but we did find gabbro uh, right next to it, a quartz gabbro. So that's promising. Uh, over to the next one. So this is a this is the copper hawk. So we have a brecciated vein in, in the middle there. It's about 50 centimeters long, or 50 centimeters wide. And it's uh, within a graphitic uh, siltstone. It's uh, stock work. It has uh, about 4% arsino, uh, 3% uh, stibnite, a whole bunch of pyrite. Um, but we're hoping to find gold uh, within that. Uh, go down to the next one there. So this is the uh, um, 62 meters away from the Copper Hawk. Uh, and it's a brecciated quartz vein system. Uh, we potentially can uh, trench it, but uh, that's for a different uh, program altogether. Um, and over to the next one. And this is a uh, um, 
uh, stock work system uh, within graphitic uh, siltstone. Uh, it's three meters uh, channeled. And uh, like I said, we're just awaiting assays for it. Next uh, slide. So these are outstanding shares, uh, 77 million shares uh, outstanding, 9.2 warrants, number two, uh, sorry, 9.2 million warrants, uh, 6 million options, and uh, fully diluted is uh, 92.3 million. Okay, next slide. And uh, if you want to find us, uh, we're on the TSX uh, at SkyG, uh, US SRKZF, uh, and uh, FS uh, or FSE uh, QSGB. All right, uh, any questions? Uh, um, I can answer them after. Well, thanks very much, Aaron. Uh, greatly appreciate it. Um, I wanted to draw everyone's attention. If you have any questions, uh, please do use the question box and we can deal with them at the end. Uh, and that way we can bring Alex up next. Um, I also want to draw everyone's attention to that. We, we do a podcast as well called Kissing the Cod. And Rich Goldfarb recently did a uh, podcast and really spoke to the potential in Newfoundland for new discoveries. And watching your presentation, Aaron, uh, really draws me back to a lot of the stuff that Rich was talking about and what we're going to see coming forward. So with that, thank you very much. Uh, next up, we have Alex Klenman with uh, Leah Kaur. Uh, Alex joins us today with as the CEO and director and brings uh, three decades of public and private experience to his position at Leah Kaur. He's involved with a number of other companies as well. And uh, Leah Kaur is operating on the island of Newfoundland in several different districts and I will let Alex uh, explain away. So all yours, take it away, Alex. Well, thank you, Janet, much appreciated. And thanks for uh, the attendees to uh, make time to hear about our company and the other companies uh, on the panel today. Uh, Leo Cor Gold trades on the CSE under the, under the symbol LECR. We're also on the QB in the US, LECRF. Um, as mentioned, as Janet mentioned, we are a Newfoundland based uh, explorer. Uh, we carved out some space early, um, three or four years ago there, and we've been expanding ever since. Um, let's go to the, I should say before we go to the next slide, that we are an exploration stage company, but we're doing things um, on a pretty big scale. So we'll get into that right now. Uh, Gemma, you can go to the next slide, please. A standard disclaimer, which um, really needs no um, explanation. Uh, so we won't, we'll go to the next slide. Thank you. So uh, our, our, our flagship at this point is called the Bayvert Package. Um, it's located in a great mining district uh, in the, on the, along the Bayvert Peninsula. Um, we pieced together multiple smaller claim blocks um, and built it out to uh, about 2,000 hectares. Um, the, the land package consists of several uh, known um, um, prospects, uh, Dorset, Dorset Extension, Five Mile Brook and Copper Creek. Um, so they extend across uh, and on trend with, with a highly structured and defined part of a, a, um, of a mineral rich region. So obviously you need structure and we've got lots of that there. Um, we just announced actually this morning uh, the commencement of a RAB drill program. RAB stands for Rotary Air Blast. Um, it's a pretty non-invasive way to get a lot of um, um, exploratory holes done in a short period of time. Um, and we're doing that through six uh, already established target areas, which have good gold values already built in. Um, there's been very little work done, modern work done in this area. Um, really everything like the rest of the island was, was a Naranda play back in, in the day. And uh, when they cut and ran, uh, it, 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 everything fell into sort of local prospectors and small companies for, for 20, 25 years. And, and the amount of work that was done was, was, was really, wasn't much. So when we talk about opportunity in Newfoundland, um, that's what we're talking about. There just hasn't been a lot of modern exploration or really, um, uh, detailed exploration done over the past couple of decades and uh, always takes a nice big discovery, um, to bring that to attention, i.e. Uh, Newfound Gold. Um, and, and, you know, there's every reason to believe there may not be another newfound gold in terms of grade, um, but there's certainly going to be discoveries made across the island, and, and we're excited about our Bayvert package. Um, we're, we're, 
we've got a we part of the methodology we use. Um, Sean Ryan, who's a well-known prospector, uh, really um, made his bones in the in the Yukon, but then turned his attention around 2015-2016 to Newfoundland, um, basically recognizing the underexplored um, situation, and and not only that, but the geological characteristics of the island that were so um, conducive to to massive gold deposition. So um, following that, um, we do a lot of soil grid work, and and we did a we did a, a bunch of work in that Baber package um, over the last year, and and it really kind of lit up, lit us up here. We, we we found this seven kilometer trend that we didn't really know was there. Uh, we knew that there was mineralization, and there were prospects and showings, and 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 some good grades, uh, some really good grades, in fact. Um, but to find this trend was a real bonus and and uh, really kind of woke us up to what the Bay Bird package potential might be. Um, and so we're in there right now with the RAB uh, program and and the, the goal of the RAB program is to uh, further uh, um, uh, hone in on diamond targets. We'd like to get the diamond program done this fall. And uh, the first step to really generating grade eight targets would be this RAB program on the heels of the soil grid that we've done. So that's Bayvert. Um, we're active at Bayvert right now. Uh, the news went out today uh, and we're excited about uh, what lays ahead with, uh, with, with Bayvert. Next slide, Jim. So um, we also have something called the Western Exploit District. Uh, this is a massive uh, land package, 144,000 hectares. Um, and it, it was brought to us by Sean and and uh, who's really overseeing all the exploration along with uh, our QP Jody Gibson. Um, uh, Western Exploit is made up of three different packages, Hodges Hill, Roberts Arm, and Leamington. Um, they cover numerous geologically favorable corridors um, and 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 really what what um, we wanted to see and what we were looking for were these gabbros, um, which are great it, great it's a great environment for gold. Um, and so we're 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 right now in the middle of doing uh, sort of massive soil grids. Now we're not doing them over the entire sections of these projects. That's 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 a lot of man hours, a lot of a lot of cash. We're, we're well funded, but we're we're sort of picking and choosing the areas that we're going into. Uh, to date, we've done well over twenty thousand samples, um, which is a massive number. Um, and and work continues. Uh, we're in there uh, on a regular basis, uh, gridding off different sections of each project. Um, looking to follow up anything that lights up with with good soils, and uh, again, what we like about this approach, um, if you look at Newfoundland and you find these areas that really have had no work done but are geologically conducive or geologically favorable for gold deposition, um, then you like your chances. I mean, you were throwing out a pretty big net here. Now, in a year or two, will we still have 144,000 hectares? Probably not. Um, we'll have cut down the amount and the size of these packages to the areas that are the hottest, that are showing us the, the, the best love and, and, and we'll concentrate our efforts in there. Again, the idea here is generate the targets through the soil grid, then get in with the RAB and the GT probe, which is a GT probe is, is, a, is a ground truth uh, method. Ground truth is a company that Sean has affiliation with. And so we're using these GT probes as well. Um, and they, again, this is just generating tons of data for us to uh, generate and, 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 and vector in on, on what we think are quality diamond drill uh, targets. So um, again, uh, Western Exploit, a little different than Bayvert. Bayvert's a 2,000 hectare package. It's a little bit more advanced, obviously. It's had a lot more work done over the years. But this area here is, is in, in the right units, in the, in the right setting, and it's big. So we like our chances of running into discovery and impactful discovery over the Western Exploit District. Okay, next, uh, Gemma. We have a, a project near Gander called Star Trek, um, and it's a six, it's almost 7,000 hectares. Uh, has a lot of um, uh, geological characteristics that we like, um, and we we've done uh, we've done some surveys there. We continue to do again soil grid work, uh, and we'll follow up with RAB. As well, again, this is a different area in Newfoundland, um, a prolific area. Um, I guess the one theme through all of our packages is is that each project sits in an area that has mineralization, has working mines, has um, has uh, uh, all of the right things you want to see, all the precursors that you need to see. And uh, so we're excited about uh, uh, Gander and and Star Trek as well. 
uh, again, we're, we're, we're working three different project areas. We're doing it in a method, methodical way, um, and we're doing it. There's no rush here. Uh, we've been just quietly going about our business um, and getting the work done uh, because eventually, you know, I think we're going to run into some, some meaningful discovery um, on, on all three of these projects. Okay, next, please. A uh, quick peek at our capital structure. Uh, we have 53 million shares outstanding, uh, 1.3 million options. You can see the prices there way high uh, compared to where we are today, thanks to the market saw uh, and the general malaise of the overall markets at the moment. Uh, we have 28 million warrants out, again, 50 to 75 cents. Financing we did was at 50 cents. Uh, the stock ran as high as 90 cents uh, early on. Um, we have about 7 million or so in cash, maybe closer to eight. Uh, so we have lots of cash, and uh, we'll be deploying that cash in appropriate ways over the next uh, six months to the next year, uh, with the goal of discovery being being exactly what we want. And, and we're confident we're going to get there, and we're going to be able to do that. Uh, we have all the right things working in our favor. Um, I guess the only thing that isn't working right now is the markets themselves. Um, but, you know, in, in these down periods, there are opportunities, and particularly for uh, opportunity for companies you didn't know were there. Um, where you're not in a situation where you're already down. Uh, you, if you come and see any one of the companies in this panel today, I'm sure you'll see um, that their share prices have dipped from where they were. Um, but if you're unfamiliar with them and you don't hold positions in any of them now, I mean, you're staring at opportunity. Uh, and we're no different. Uh, we're cashed up. We've got big land packages. We're working with Sean Ryan, who really is uh, one of the best in the business. He has a great history of massive discovery. And, uh, and we're happy uh, with our technical team, which is super strong. And uh, we've got a lot of things going for us. So keep us on your radar and uh, remember the symbol LECR on the CSE. Thank you. Thanks so much, Alex. I, I also see that uh, you have Jody Gibson with you. Yeah, yeah, Jody yeah. came on as our QP and um, again, just strengthens our sort of dream team of, on the technical side. Yeah, I, uh, I know Sean and, and Jody have worked together in the past, so you've got a great great team going there. Uh, Thank you. Thanks very much. Thank uh, you. Ask uh, Chris Reynolds to join us now from Opal Wicca. Uh, Chris you. is, uh, how are you doing, Chris? Good, I'm good. Okay. Thank you for having me. Ah, it's great to see you. Uh, Chris has been, um, is a director of Opal Wicca, um, has been investing in the natural resource sector for about 10 years and involved with um, a lithium company as well in the past, and is a partner at Longview Capital. Um, Opa Wicca is uh, another early stage company, uh, exploration with a portfolio of projects across Newfoundland. And I welcome Chris to take it away and give more of the story directly. Thanks, Janet. All, um, all right, everybody. Thank you all for being here today and uh, allow me to tell you a little bit about what we are doing in Opal Week Explorations, Inc. So to preface this and to give you a little bit of a preamble, we, are, we came together as a team to focus on structurally controlled gold projects in Canada. So we were able to acquire and put together a nice portfolio in the Ruin Naranda camp of Quebec. And in about, it was it was 2019 or so when the real gold rush started in Newfoundland with the discovery of the Lotto and Keat zone from Newfound Gold. So, you know, we came together and we were looking at this like, what could this be? If it works, how much is it worth? And how much is it worth our time and money? And so I started to do a little research and consult with the gentleman who's the head research scientist at the Geological Survey of Canada. His name is Wouter Bleeker. And to my surprise, there are many hallmarks that represent what turned into the Abitibi Greenstone Belt in Newfoundland. So if uh, you could keep on Gemma, please passing on to the next slide. This is our... Uh, look at our disclaimer and now to the next slide please so the newfoundland gold district why did we put together a package of assets in newfoundland because we believe that the potential for newfoundland is 
what was the early stages of some of the biggest mining camps in Canada, such as, you know, Kirkland Lake, Timmins, Ruinaranda, Laurent, Val d'Or. The structures from the Victoria Lake shear zone to the Dog Bay line from the, the southeastern end of Newfoundland from Cape Ray, all the way up to the northern extension of the Dog Bay line is revealing, modern prospecting is revealing gold showings in major fault corridors, which is fundamental to the development of structurally controlled gold systems. The largest deposit in Atlantic Canada is along the Victoria Lake shear zone in four different satellite deposits called the Valentine deposit owned by Marathon. I'm sure a lot of the audience here has heard about the, that project. It's trading at about a half a billion dollar market cap and um, it's 4.2 million tons at 1.8 grams per ton. So we followed that trend in the Rogersons corridor and we acquired three different projects in that in that zone. Um, one of which is adjacent to Tex Duck Pond Mine, which was a nice 6 million ton VMS deposit. So there are many different types of mineralization that occurs in Newfoundland, and we aren't completely uh, stuck on gold. We want to find something that is the lowest hanging fruit on our property. So if you could please pass on to the next slide, Gemma. Perfect. So this is a map, a good geological map of Newfoundland um, that shows a lot of the uh, gold showings. And this is what's called the Dunnage Zone, which is the most explored zones in Newfoundland. Now, there are major different, there are a few different major breaks that govern the mineralization in Newfoundland. And Everybody knows the Dog Bay line because it represents a billion dollars in market cap in newfound gold. But to the east, there are new discoveries being made all of the time. Like some of the presentations that some of the presentations that you just heard that could turn into some massive gold discoveries. And the contention in Newfoundland is that it's Cambrian rock, it's not Archean. So it's a little bit of a different age, um, but the, the structures are deep, they're mobilizing fluids from deep in the earth in the mantle that are rich hydrothermal fluids. And you know what, it's, uh, if I think I know what I know, people are relating this to, you know, Fosterville and Victoria and, you know, Eric Sprott came in, everybody started about Eric Sprott investing a lot of money into this area and, you know, he, found and developed the highest grade lowest cost producer in the world today which is the fosterville gold mine and i believe that had a refractory or cap over it too so you know there are similarities and um that's the risk that you take for the reward and that's why um we are here and we are investing in it because we believe it's if it's worth anything, it's worth more than a hundred million dollars. It's worth a substantial economic value for the country of Canada. And um, please go into the next slide, Gemma. So these are some of our main projects here um, along the Victoria Lake Shear Zone, um, in the Rogersons Corridor, along strike of the Marathon. Valentine Deposit and uh, a bunch of other good companies doing good work in the area. These assets have been, are, are our, there are grassroots assets. We haven't done a lot of work on these assets yet. We've been, we've moved into the, into Newfoundland to have the opportunity that offers us value and flexibility, flexibility and value over time. So we've been, we've raised, you know, 5 million bucks. We've done 5,000 meters in our Ruin Rand camp, our bazooka project. We're waiting for our assays on there. We're very excited about it. The geology looks good. We, um, we're doing 5,000 meters of drilling on our Arrowhead property, which is encircled by Agnico Eagle currently in the Ruin Rand camp as well. That geology looks good. We're excited about it. We're waiting for the assays. In Newfoundland, we've done a widespread grain in till soil sampling program on our properties to understand 
a little bit more about the gold grains that are on our property because you see in Newfoundland, there's glacial till. And glacial till can be overburdened from one meter to a hundred meters. So sometimes I would argue, you know, that soil sampling isn't the best like method of exploration work because it's not representative that that gold came from a structure that's on your property. Whereas if you do golden grain till sampling, you see subrounded and angular gold grains, and you can kind of get a deductive reasoning to suggest where that gold grain might be leaching from on your property. So you cross-reference that with, uh, you know, some good geophysics, and you have a target and a conductor to drill. So that is the process in, that's where we stand in Opawika. We've done our grain until sampling programs. We're working with Goldspot. We're interpreting that data as a, and cross-referencing the grains um, to the to the structures that are on our property, and we are going to probably spend another half a million to a million dollars on geophysics on our properties to really put really sharpen the axe before we cut down the tree and drilling, um, and uh, and then we are going to attack those targets and and. Uh, doesn't necessarily mean that they will be gold projects. I'm interested in VMS mineralization as well. Um, so you can keep a, keep watching our company. We will be doing this work. Um, we've got 41 million shares outstanding. We've got 51 fully diluted. We are capitalized right now. Our main focus is in Quebec. But we will be bringing and raising these companies to these projects to a drill ready stage. We believe in the value that they represent. And um, thank you very much for listening to my presentation. My name is Christopher Reynolds, and uh, I hope that uh, I can answer any questions that you guys have. Thanks so much, Chris. Really appreciate it. And um, I think your projects are in a, a great location along the Valentine Lake Shear Zone. Um, further south uh, to Marathon. And mm -hmm. I really agree with you. We're very early in the discovery stage in Newfoundland. And um, a thing I like about all three of these companies is, is they do offer that very early stage process. But as you know, sometimes um, investors love drilling, so we have to be realistic in, in well, trying you know, to explain yeah, Real results move markets. Real results move markets, but um, you know it's all about the fundamentals about yep. what's going to turn into a mine. Yeah, I agree. I agree. I, I'd ask Aaron and Alex to to join us again on camera, and um, we'll just field a few questions now. Um, and I thank you all. And 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 I really, you know, it's a tough time in the market, but it's great to see that the work's going on, and it, you know it it will come back. Um, and we'll start with with Aaron and then Alex and Chris. A question to each of you, just to summarize what you envision. Uh, just a quick summary of what your program is going to look like this year, just so people know what to expect. Well, uh, we're waiting on Goldspot's um, analysis of the Mustang uh, property, uh, so we don't know how much we're going to drill, uh, but we are planning on drilling uh, in October, November, something like that. But we need to uh, get the gold spot um, uh, uh, structural analysis to uh, find out all the all the drill uh, holes that we need to drill. But we're uh, we're waiting assays, and um, uh, we're really looking forward to getting those back and uh, starting drilling in October, November. Thank you, Alex. Yeah, as mentioned uh, in the presentation I did, uh, we are uh, continuing to do our soil grid programs across the bigger packages. Uh, we've completed that particular um, exploration uh, method on, on the Bay Burt package, and we're now RAB drilling there as of uh, yesterday or this morning when the news went out. Uh, we're going to get 25 to 30 holes done uh, in some pretty uh, targeted zones. Um, the data that we generate from those RAB holes will guide our diamond holes in the fall. Uh, so we'll get a diamond program done. Again, meterage and it will be dependent upon what we see and we'll consult with, with Sean and, and Jody and the others to see um, exactly what we want to do. We have the cash to spend. Uh, we have some flow through, so we're going to spend it. 
Um, and then uh, in terms of Western exploits, the big package, we're going to continue to do what we're doing, which is sort of target these areas, uh, these soil grids, tighten up the grids, um, continue to try to target areas that we see structure and, and, and value. And uh, again, I think the idea with Western exploits is so big um, that we need to cut it down over time. We, we can't possibly carry 144,000 hectares for very long. Um, and, and, but the idea is throw that net out super wide, see what you have, and then hone in on those areas. So we're going to be super active over the next six to 12 months, um, regardless of market, uh, uh, how the market's responding or not responding. Um, we're going to keep doing what we're doing because I think Janet, you and I spoke earlier, uh, it, it, this is the time to do it. So when everybody comes rushing back, when retail comes back, when volumes return, um, you know, you're going to have something to speak to rather than saying, well, we did nothing while everyone was away. Now, you know, I think the best best strategy is get the work done if you have the cash to do it. And when, when everybody comes running back, you'll, uh, you'll have something to say and you may have an audience. Excellent. I agree. And, and Chris, what, what's your program? Uh, like? Daniel, we have approximately 36,000 hectares of land in Newfoundland, and we will be focusing on the Eclipse mass and density properties. And that's about two thirds of that land package. We will be interpreting our, so we're like Aaron, working with Goldspot and they are helping us with our technical team interpret and cross-reference the data that we've got. We will then probably go out and do some Newfoundland flow through and as I said our focus has been in Quebec and we will then probably do like a magnetic time delay or VTEM and um, that will then substantiate the next steps, which will probably be um, some type of either, you know, 100 to 250 meter holes. Okay. Um, and Goldspot, uh, proven success at the Queensway project uh, with Newfound and, and great technical team and uh, same with with Sean Ryan and, and Ground Truth. You're all working with with some really proven people. Um, one of the one of the I questions. Mean, sorry. Nothing. I just want people to be excited about that project, the Queensway and the like, the Lotto and the Keats Zone. That's like a Scorsese film for the mining industry. You guys know, like that's that's incredible, incredible intercept. You understand that on the Appleton Fault Zone and the Dog Bay Line which is the only asset of the company, it's a billion dollars in market cap. It's not like coming from this place and coming from this place, it's coming from right here. And that's yeah. where a lot of the contention lies in Newfoundland too, but it's exciting, right? Yeah, and I think it's really interesting too, when you look at the footprint at Keats, it's not real big. And, yeah. and you know, I mean, I, when you see it, I had a guy show me a chart and it looked like one of those, you know, if you sit with an anal psychoanalyst, they say, what's that? You know, they show you some kind of a weird uh, figure or lot of ink and he showed me these and, he, and there's all these big wax all over this page and then there's this little thing in the middle and I said so what am I looking at he said and he's a mining engineer he says that's the Keats deposit and I'm like well um, so you know uh, but that's what you get with grade I guess astronomical grade right yep yeah. but you know what it is about the mining industry right the sh discoveries made in the shadow of the head frame mm -hmm. so you have the shearing you've got the veining and you've got gold and they're deep-seated structures so there could be a lot more. Oh, we know Newfoundland has got a lot more to offer. That's why we're there. Yeah. Yeah, definitely, definitely agree. Um, one question that's coming up that I'm hoping all of you can uh, um, address, and we'll start with Chris first, and then Alex and Aaron. Um, quick question, uh, where do you see the markets going? It's pretty, pretty soft right now. There's been a big sell-off in the general market. Like, I mean, look, uh, it's not the fall that's going to kill you, it's the drag, right? So it's interesting. The gold price is actually looking pretty good. Interest rates, inflation. Um, I It was like the base metals index that was up. And also the junior resource index was, the junior explorer index was up when the price of gold was down last week and i think that's a good representation of bottom feeding so people with free cash flow will take advantage of these valuations 
but they're yeah. not going to try to like buy up the stock. They're going to try to, you know, take as much stock as you want to sell me at this price, you see. Um, mm -hmm. and, uh, and then we're going to see a correction. And, um, I think we're in a macro environment for commodities, especially gold. I've been really happy with how gold has held up through all of this. And Alex, uh, thoughts? Yeah, no, I think it's going to, I think it's going to be ugly for a little while. Um, there's no quick fix here. Um, but you know, in fact, we were talking about this earlier as well. Um, go back and look at charts over 30, 40, 50 years. And anytime you get a massive drop, you, it's usually followed by a return. Um, these things are set in stone. They never remain constant. They change. Uh, so we'll go through this for a bit. Greed, we're in the fear, uh, fear zone right now. Greed will take over. Um, once people get, get sick of, of fear, um, and we're, remember, investors' funds are, are all conditioned to spend money. Um, leopards don't change their spots, um, you know, and they're going to come back. They always do. Uh, funds need to deploy capital because it needs to be working. It's no good on the sidelines. Um, and there's deals to be had. And they, the only issue is, yeah, safety in numbers or misery loves company. But, but at the same time, um, there's a lot of good deals. Every company on this this panel today is is undervalued um and and i and, and listen there's never a time i've ever heard a ceo of a public company say we're, we're overvalued okay <laughs> but, right but but the reality is everybody's undervalued right now so if, if anything you know there's 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 some argument to even market into this because because there's so many value values to be found um you know you kind of want to be there too um, but I think it's going to be ugly for, you know, the summer and we've come back to the old cycle of, you know, sell in May and, and go away. And then, you know, but that's why I'm really looking forward to see how August indicators, August is usually pretty good for gold. Um, and then, so we'll see, we'll see if, if things are, are turning to the upside, but I think it'll get ugly. It'll stay ugly. It is ugly. Um, it, I don't think anybody should make decisions right now. If you haven't made a decision, now's not the time to make those decisions right if, if you're still holding then there's no point um in whacking anything out right now sit on sit on your positions and let them come back because you're better off letting them come back and maybe taking the loss a little higher um but but i still think uh if any if history tells us anything at all it'll all come roaring back and we'll, we'll this will just be a memory in the past aaron aaron any thoughts well I, i'd have to agree with alex uh it's not looking good uh for gold over the next uh you know three or four months or something like that. But like, like I'm a geologist, I'm from Gander originally, right? Like uh, uh, I just uh, keep my, my head in the rocks and uh, like, uh, you know, look for, um, you know, like uh, uh, look for quartz veins, look for good host, host rocks, good, good stock working, good, uh, you know, stuff like that. Uh, that's what I've been finding out there. And, uh, you know, like, Price of gold goes up and down, but uh, you know, as long as you find good rocks, you're, you know, you're pretty gold, right? I, I like it. Stick to the plan, right? Exactly. Yeah. yeah. Now is the time to stick to the plan. It really is. Yeah. I, you, 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 good management in place, uh, cash in the bank, a great jurisdiction. I, I think, uh, again, we're running, running podcasts. Um, please go and watch the Rich Goldfarb podcast. He, he sees great potential in Newfoundland as one of the two best jurisdictions in the world for economic discoveries. Um, we're also going to have podcasts with uh, these companies as well, so you can get an extended conversation and get to know management a bit better. Um, I'm going to wrap it up. I know we've we've been here for a while, and I just want to summarize again, uh, thanking everybody. Uh, Sky Gold, uh, again, TSXV. S-K-Y-G. Uh, Leah Core on the CSE is L-E-C-R. And Opa Wicca is on the TSXV at O-P-W. Uh, Alex, Chris, Aaron, thank you all for joining us today. And I thank everybody uh, for joining us. And everyone will receive a copy uh, of the presentation. And any further questions, please contact any of the companies directly or contact us at info at uh, newfoundland.gold. But thank you, gentlemen. Um, we yeah, should thank you. And uh, it was a pleasure presenting with you, Aaron and Alex.
Appreciate it. Yeah, yeah. great Thanks. to see you guys. Thank you, and good luck for, uh, over the summer months here. Yeah, good luck uh, find gold, man. Yeah, that's the game. Thanks, guys. Thank you, Dan. Okay. Have a great day, everybody.